What's up guys, it's Eddie Man and Hayek with Make Digital Art and today I'm going to show you how to create a brush from an image in Photoshop. So the first thing you want to do is get your image. I'm going to go to DeviantArt. I'm looking up landscape because that's something practical I could use this in. Um, I could create a brush for leaves, trees, clouds, stars, rocks, mountains, things that are very repetitive in landscape painting. And that's what a lot of you might use it for. So I figured this would make more sense as an example. We're actually going to be using this image I found by the artist Asura Misoa. And I'm going to open that up in Photoshop now. Go to open, open up the image. And all you have to do to create your brush is pick the part that you want to make a brush out of. So I want to use these leaves over here. So I'm actually going to zoom in so I can select them using the lasso tool and the shortcut for that is L and basically what you want to do when creating a brush is go for the simplest element. So what I can see here is there is a lot of repeating of reflecting leaves. So one leaf going to the left, one leaf going to the right. So I'm actually going to just use these two at the bottom here in my selection to create my brush. So I'm just going to select them. Now that I've got them selected, all I'm going to do is hit Control J to put them in a new layer. And once I've done that, I'm going to hide the old layer. And all I have to do now is hit edit and then define brush brush preset. Now we're just going to name it leaf one. And now that we've done that, you can see that our brush has changed into our selection. So if we zoom out so we can see more. Now, if I paint, you can see that it's a very transparent brush. And that's because of this image using different colors in these leaves. So you see the greens here. There are some that are darker and some that are lighter. Photoshop, when you create a brush, uses the lightness levels and the black and whites of an image to determine what's opaque and what's transparent in a brush. So if we take if we undo the brush that we just put on, so the painting that we just did, and just go back to the original selection we made here and copied, what we're going to do is hit Control Shift U to desaturate it. And now you can see, just like I said, it's grayish. It's not a full black. So that's why it comes out semi transparent when we paint it here like this. I hit Control Z to undo that. So now to fix that problem, or to avoid it, what we have to do is bring this all the way to black. So in order to do that, you don't want to use the same selection that you already did. What you want to do is go back to the original image before you made that layer. And you can just use Control Z to do that. When you have the selection, create a new layer. So hit Control Shift N, create the new layer. And what you're going to do instead of copying we're going to hit shift f5 to fill the selection on the new layer with black if we now create a new brush preset from this selection we're going to hit edit define brush preset and type in leaves two now when we paint it you can see it's a full solid green here using the green that i have in my color picker right now so that fixes that problem. And now the other problem we'll have is you'll see if I click and drag, this brush just looks like a normal brush now. So to fix that, we have to go into our brush settings up in the top left. You'll see this icon next to the brush icons. This is for the brush settings panel. And click that. And first thing you're going to see open is the brush tip shape on the left hand side and spacing. This is what you want to change. So you want to space this out so that the leaves are separate from each other and you want to size it up just so you can see better in the preview pane but now when i click and drag we'll see the leaves are not touching so they're not overrunning each other so they're actually separate leaves but to make this look more natural we're going to want to go into our shape dynamics move the size jitter up so that not every leaf is the exact same size and we're going to turn the control drop down into pen pressure because I am using a tablet and that will help make it more natural, adding more size jitter. And we're going to add a little bit of angle jitter, but not too much. 
to make the leaves rotate just 3% for us so that they're not the same exact rotation in every instance as you can see on the bottom preview pane. Some are a little bit tilted. Um, we're going to want to go into scattering and this basically scatters as it says. So we're just going to increase that by a little bit just to make the leaves a little bit more random. We're going to go into our color dynamics, check that off. And we're just going to increase the brightness to five and leave everything else at zero. And that's going to change the brightness. And then finally we should be done. So all we want to do to save the settings that we just did is go into the hamburger icon on the top right of the brush settings window. And you're going to click that hit new brush preset and make sure that you have include tool settings checked off. So we're going to name this leaves three now. So now that we have that checked off, if we paint, let's just zoom out so we get more space here. If we paint, you'll see that now we've got a lot more randomness with the leaves going on. Even if we paint in a straight line, it doesn't come out in a straight line. So using this, we can create some more realistic looking bushes by just using a little bit of color theory. And... I just hit control Z a bunch of times just to clear up our board. Now, what I mentioned about color theory, all I was saying is nothing complex. It's just, we're gonna use darker colors first, paint in some leaves. So we're gonna hit B to bring our brush up again, paint in some darker leaves. And then we're going to change the color to make it a little bit lighter and then paint some lighter leaves on top of the darker ones. And then once more, we're gonna go in, change the color, make it a little bit lighter, and these will add our highlight leaves. So these will be the ones all the way on the top. So this creates the image of depth, and this way you can create some more realistic looking bushes, leaves, uh, grass, anything you need for your image. But basically, this is it. You're done creating your brush. Now, for those who want to create brushes using more complex images, for example, if we go back to our image and they want to do something like this flower, the issue with that is you'll run into the same problem that we ran into the leaf where it'll be semi-transparent when we do that. So what you want to do instead to handle more complex images like this is either A, find substitutes so if we just open up google so we just go to google type in black and white flower and you'll see here this is something that would work for the brushes because it's solid with the differences being the in-between lines that would be just colored lines in this image on this one are actually separated by white so it's more distinct and you can separate the image that way instead of using different colors which will cause opacity problems but if you don't want to do that and you want to use the same exact image the easiest thing to do would be for you to just create the selection just like we did with the leaves make sure it's clean so i'm going to do that really quickly Now that we've got it cleaned up, I'm going to just show you how it looks when we just create a brush preset from this existing selection. So we're just gonna name it flower one. And now as you can see, it has the same transparency problem that the leaf had when we originally started. But if we were to fix it the same way we did with the leaf and just select this, and fill it all with black in a new layer shift f5 black we lose all the detail of the flower so it can't be done as a brush exactly the best way to handle this would just to be create the quick selection like i did clean it up and then all you want to do this is the simplest way would be to just copy and paste it wherever needed and just transform it as you need. So if we wanted to create something like the original image, we're gonna turn that back on just so I can see the reference. We're just gonna take copies of the image. So 
So hit control J to create your duplicates. And then all you're going to do So, so like I just did, you want to hit control J and that'll make a copy of your current layer. So that for that for us is this flower. So you can see I have two flowers now. If we open up the original, just to have some reference, you'll kind of be able to go around, transform these as you want, flip it so that it doesn't look exactly the same. Maybe you want to go in and individually transform the stem so that it's a little bit longer and uh maybe you want to go in and repaint some of the layers if you want to get that detailed about it but basically you'll be able to kind of just go go through it by transforming as needed and kind of fill up the image that way that would be the easiest method using the same method we can develop other brushes as well which i have done so things like the grass blades and then you'll be able to create something like this now this is just for example's sake i don't mean to plagiarize the art in any shape way or form i'm just showing you guys how quick we were able to create that all i did that in about 10 minutes including creating the brushes that whole entire process only took me about that long so you guys can do this to save yourselves a lot of time doing your work so both for the things where it's easy and solid like the blades of grass and the leaves on the tree but also just copy and pasting transforming detailed images like the flowers so doing a combination of these both you'll be able to create brushes and do a substitute for the things you're not able to to really speed up your workflow if this video helped you guys out please like it really helps out the channel thanks so much for watching